the webinar today, and thank you for joining us. If you're listening to the live webinar event and wish to earn ASHA CEUs for this course, you must attend the entire one-hour session. The handout and all the forms you need to complete to obtain CE credit are posted on speechandlanguage.com. Be sure and mail the forms to the address posted on speechandlanguage.com. Search for webinar forms, and you'll also find the address on the last slide of your handout. The form must be postmarked by September 4, 2015. If you happen to have more than one person at your location, please download the attendance sheet and have each person requesting CEU sign the sheet and complete the ASHA participant form and evaluation form. You cannot decide to earn ASHA CEUs for the course after September 4th. If you're on the line for less than 60 minutes or if you don't turn in the forms postmarked by 9415, you will not have the opportunity to earn ASHA CEUs at a later date. Now that we've gotten through that part, let me introduce our speaker today, Shannon Wong. So, good afternoon and welcome to our presentation of the Goldman Bristow Test of Articulation 3rd Edition. We're very happy to announce that GFTA 3 will be available mid-September of this year. This presentation will provide you with a brief overview of the changes from GFTA 2 and also provide you information about the new features of the test. So this slide is our disclosure slide that shows that I am a Pearson employee and that I will be talking about the GFTA, which is a Pearson product. So for today, I'll be spending some time going through a brief overview, explaining administration directions and scoring, interpre interpretation of test results using the error analysis tables that are new, and also the technical information related to the standardization, including data about reliability and validity. We'll also have an answer and qu uh, question and answer session if the time permits. For our learning objectives, at the end of the session, you should be able to name two differences between the GFTA 2 and the GFTA 3. You'll also be able to provide one example of a case when dialect-sensitive scoring would be appropriate, and also list at least two factors to consider when evaluating examinee's error patterns on GFTA 3. So for a sneak peek. go. <coughs> So here's a sneak peek of what the new GFTA-3. The GFTA-3 includes the manual, a record form, and also the stimulus book. So in the manual, it will include an overview of the test, administration directions and scoring considerations, test interpretation, description of the design of the test and standardization, evidence of reliability and validity, and of course it includes updated norms. For the stimulus book, it includes the administration directions and the images that um, you'll show the examinee. For the record form, it includes space for you to mark the phoneme productions that are in error, and you also may transcribe the examinee's responses. There are also, like I said, three new analyses that you may choose to complete so that you can review the examinee's speech skills. So what is new? Well, GFTA 3 was designed to include all the best features of GFTA 2, including brief administration time, ease of administration and scoring, and its excellent psychometric characteristics. In addition to those features, though, we listened to SLP's recommendations on how best to improve usability. We also reviewed current literature and practice patterns related to assessing speech sound disorders. With that said, the new features include scoring every consonant error in each context in which the sound errors occur in the stimulus words. As you'll remember, in GFTA 2, target words counted in only one instance. We made this change to count every sound error because we heard from so many clinicians that a child may get the target sound correct when it's elicited, but then as the assessment continued, they noticed that the same sounds were not produced correctly in other words. Something else that's new is the dialect-sensitive scoring. So based on current best practice, you're now able to take dialect patterns of examinees into account when scoring responses. If you know that an examinee speaks a dialect other than standard American English and you notice those patterns are consistent, 
with the dialect that your examinee is producing, you can score those responses as correct. This will reduce the over-identification of examinees who demonstrate a dialect difference rather than a speech sound disorder. Something that's very new is the sounds and sentences test format. We've changed it to a sentence imitation task. Based on this new format, we were able to collect data so that normative scores such as standard scores, percentile ranks, and age equivalents were able to be calculated and are now available. These scores can be used to compare an examinee's productions and connected speech versus single word productions. As part of that, a new intelligibility measure is produced, introduced into GFTA3. This measure is found in the sounds and sentences test and is optional for you to use. Of course, as we've said, there are new norms available based on the most current census figures. We're going to talk about the pictures. So for GFTA2, we use one set of stimulus pictures. Whoops. So I'm sorry about that interruption. So for GFTA2, we use one set of stimulus pictures for examinees ages 2 to 21. GFTA3 now offers two sets of art, one that's appropriate for very young children that you may test and one that's more appropriate for the older elementary, middle, and high school students that you may test. We did this so that, that the test would be engaging and appropriate for both the younger children as well as for older children and young adults needing an articulation assessment. GFTA3 now offers both digital and traditional paper and pencil formats for test administration and scoring. One of our digital um, platforms that we use is called Q Interactive. In Q Interactive, there are two iPads, one that you use to guide you through test administration and one that is presented to the examinee to see the visual stimuli. Using Q Interactive, you can audio record responses, flag audio recordings that you want to listen to later, and when you're all done, scoring is immediate and automatic. Administration, scoring, and reporting is all connected. You pay a per administration fee that includes administration, scoring, and reporting. And if you decide to add a KLPA3 analysis, you can obtain an analysis for an additional charge, but with no additional data entry. Another digital offering is Q Global. Q Global offers a digital administration on only one screen. What's available is a digital manual, a digital stimulus book, and scoring. None of these digital pieces are connected. You're able to display the pictures to the child on any computer or tablet, and you can go through the digital manual and search for the text and highlight the bookmark sections that you use frequently. Use a paper record form. And after you finish testing, you enter the examinee's responses into a Q Global to obtain a score report. The responses are not captured automatically for you in this platform. You can also then choose to score by hand using paper and pencil of all the print materials. Later on, I'll share more information about the digital options. Moving on, let's talk about the sounds and words test. So here's an overview of the sounds and words test. Note what's new for this test is that there are two sets of picture stimuli, as we've said before, and there are new analyses. So there's some good news here in that there's no need to learn a new test format if you're already used to GFTA2. What you do is you present stimulus pictures and the individual names those pictures. So if the child doesn't label a picture spontaneously, you do the exact same thing. We've provided a suggested cue, or you can go ahead and provide a different cue that follows the format that we've provided. If that doesn't work, you can always ask the child to imitate the target sound that you produce. Many of the stimulus items for the GFTA3 were changed. We started the research with 126 target words, and based on the data collected, the item set was winnowed down to 60 items. On this slide, you'll see some of the test items that people asked us about the most. What you'll be happy about is that the top row of items that you see, the top row of pictures, show examples of items that were dropped. 
we took them out of GSTA because we recognize that very young children are never going to see a phone like this and that not all children have experience with clowns or activities like fishing. Now the pictures on the bottom row are test items that may lead you to wonder, well, why aren't these deleted too? These, and the reason is because these words are excellent discriminators between children who have speech sound disorders from those who do not. 